Welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is coronavirus. Senator Kamala Harris standing by to talk about what's next in terms of the federal response. Plus, Maria Shriver and Patrick Schwarzenegger are home together. They join us to talk about how they're helping people. The Issue Is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, California's only statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is, California's only statewide political show. I'm Alex Michelson, and joining us this week, the senator from California. Kamala Harris is uh, with us from home. Thank you for letting us in your home via Zoom. Welcome back to The Issue Is. It's, it's the home where I work. Home is California. I am in D.C. because I just felt the need to be here until we get a next package of relief done. Let's talk about that next package of relief. Uh, we are uh, looking at another stimulus bill in Congress. I know one thing you want is recurring payments for people. Right now we got that one time check for many folks, 1200 bucks. You want this to be a recurring payment. How would that work? Well, it, it will work in a way that actually meets the needs of American families and working people. A uh, one-time payment of $1,200 is not going to deal with the fact that that all of the, the 16 million people who lost their jobs and, and others have bills that they have to pay every month. And until we get through this crisis, we need to make sure that, that people don't completely fall down in terms of their ability to meet their monthly essential obligations like feeding their children and paying the rent. So I'm also arguing that, that when I'm calling on the end and suspension, basically, of credit card interest payments, penalties and fees, because during this moment of crisis, and so I'm saying that they should be suspended, charging people interest, penalties or fees for the next 120 days, because again, 16 million people out of a job just in the last few weeks. A lot of folks don't have savings and are going to end up having to pay for groceries on their credit cards. And we should not, no one should be profiting off of their desperation to be able to feed their children and get through the end of the month. And so I'm calling on that. I'm also calling on the, the credit reporting in terms of negative credit scores to be suspended for 120 days. Because again, a lot of people are just not going to pay their bills on time. They, they want to, they have a history of doing it, and they're not during this crisis because they are out of work. Let's talk for a moment more about the, the credit card aspect of this. What are credit card companies saying to you? Listen, I've heard a lot of um, uh, support for what we're saying, because listen, um, when you look at the credit rate, the, the interest rates that people are paying in the 20 percentile rate range, um, that it's already exorbitant. And again, the reality is for 120 days, we need to give working people and consumers an ability to get through this pandemic without completely falling apart financially. You know, it was remarkable to see a two trillion dollar piece of legislation pass 96 to zero in the Senate. We're talking about the last stimulus in terms of the next stimulus. Are we seeing those typical partisan lines being drawn? Are we seeing agreement? What's the status of it? Well, it is my hope and, and my prayer that we're going to be able to approach this in a nonpartisan way. And it, it doesn't need to be said, but I'll say it. This, this pandemic, COVID-19, could care less about the party with which you're registered to vote. And we need to act. And so one of the things that we're arguing for and I'm arguing for is in the next bill, we in the last in, in a couple of the last bills, we made sure that that testing would be free. Let's also make sure that treatment is going to be free. And sadly, you know, frankly, there's been a vacuum of leadership um, coming out of the administration in this regard. It's been falling on mayors and governors. Um, in California, we sh should applaud the work of Governor Newsom, mayors like Mayor Garcetti, um, in San Francisco, London Breed. I, I could go down the list. I speak with the mayors on a pretty constant basis. Uh, but there is still a lot of work to be done, and we are still not adequately as a country meeting the moment in terms of the crisis that is, is in full swing. It was a remarkable moment this week when President Trump said that Governor Newsom has been a tremendous leader on this. <laughs> what do you think that President Trump could learn from Governor Newsom and California's example? He could learn a lot of things from both the governor, but also the mayors. I mean, Garcetti, Breed, they have had the courage to, to meet the moment in terms of the crisis. And their shoulders have been quite broad in terms of how they have um, carried the weight 
of, of this moment. And, and so let's talk about what exactly a quality qualities of leadership look like in a moment of crisis. One, it's the ability to embrace fact and then speak truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may make people. It is the ability in the, in the case of a public health crisis to embrace science and then act in the interest of the people as opposed to self-interest. It's not popular when mayors and governors start talking about shutting things down. But as we now know, nationally, people are looking at the leadership we've seen in California as a model for what should have been done or still can be done. Well, let's speak some truth. Uh, the, the presidential campaign itself sort of ended this week, or one aspect of it. Bernie Sanders is out. Joe Biden is going to be the nominee. The Washington Post came out with a ranking of who's most likely to be VP. And number one was Senator Kamala D. Harris of California. So I, I'm wondering, ha has the vetting process begun? And have there been any conversations between you and the Biden campaign? I have to be very honest with you. I am not focused on that. I am not focused on that at all. Listen, every single day in America right now, people are dying. The latest numbers, 455,000 Americans have contracted this virus. Six, over 16,000 people have died. Just in the last few weeks, 16 million people have lost their jobs. This is happening in real time. This pandemic is not going to wait. And it is current, it is a moment of crisis, and we need to meet the crisis. And that's, that's where I'm focused. I have to be honest with you, that is exactly where I am focused. Although I know you did make a brief uh, appearance on a fundraising call for Joe Biden this week. And, um, and I know, don't you believe that the next president and vice president, this is going to be one of the most important parts of what their job is going to be leading the country. And the vision that the Democrats are putting forward and the Republicans are putting forward are very different in terms of the long-term response to this. You're absolutely right. And um, I think there we've, we say this every cycle, but truly the, the moment of this crisis is, is, I think, highlighting that elections matter. Yes, I am supporting Joe Biden for good reason. I believe in him. He has met crisis in his in, in his career head on. He has embraced science with his moonshot initiative, which was all about embracing science around curing illness and cancer. He was with President Obama when they turned our economy around after the Great Recession and during the Great Recession. And we also need leaders who see people and feel and understand the struggle and the pain. Joe Biden is a person who cares and has empathy in, the, in, in a way that really in, informs how he goes about the work he does. And we need a president of the United States who sees what's happening and understands that, that seeing the people is not about looking in the mirror. It's about understanding who the people are and then figuring out what their needs are and meeting their needs in real time. It sounded like a persuasive pitch. Uh, I, I like to have fun on this show too. ask you one uh, fun question. Last time we talked, uh, you talked about how much you love cooking uh, at home. Uh, have you gotten more time to do that or is there anything else that you've been doing during the quarantine? I know you've been working like 24 seven, but is there any any binge shows, anything that you've done in quarantine lifestyle? Oh, quarantine lifestyle. Um, you know, we definitely I am um, I am tr I have assigned my husband Wednesdays and Saturdays to cook because I cannot cook every day. <laughs> I love cooking. Um, we are you know, we have this Saturday is chores um, in addition to all the work we're doing. And, you know, we've been binge watching a, a couple of shows. I mean, Tiger King. <laughs> Oh, what a hot mess. Um, and, and, we, we, and I've been hearing great things about Ozark, so at some point we'll get into that. And, um, and I actually watched Forrest Gump the other night, last weekend, and it was so great. So, you know, and playing music. Oh, like turn off cable news and play some music and just find a way to, you know. And then I've also, I find myself picking up the phone and calling people more than texting if I can. I think it's so important to hear laughter you know instead of just reading lol and um <laughs> so those are the things but i know we're all we're all trying to make it work and my advice to everyone and my my plea is just be kind to yourself and be patient with yourself and and each other um you know we talk about social isolation but let's make sure there's no emotional isolation nobody should feel alone right and 
So that's the most important thing I can say right now. We're going to talk more about that with Maria Shriver and Patrick Schwarzenegger right out of the break. And one thing that you and I agree on, uh, we both love to dance. Uh, and so we're, we're going to play a little bit of music. I, I will say this, uh, Senator. Um, this is you with the drum line, uh, with the K-Hive. Um, you know, I, I'm not allowed to endorse candidates, but I will endorse that you are the best dancer of all the candidates that we've seen in the last year. We love the way you move. And so uh, a, a reminder of simpler times and better times to get us through this. Senator Kamala Harris, thank you so much. Thank you. More of the issue is right after this. Thanks so much for watching The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. All of us are quarantining in our own way, but Maria Shriver has been quarantining in a high profile way. She and her son, Patrick Schwarzenegger, are home together. They've been on Instagram Live interviewing some of the most interesting people in the country about their experiences, and now they're here to talk with us. Maria Shriver, Patrick Schwarzenegger, welcome to The Issue Is. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. All right, so I started watching, I follow both of you on Instagram, and I was sort of blown away by your conversation, so I invited you to be here. I'm glad that you're talking about it. Maria, can, can you talk for a moment about Patrick's decision to move in with you and sort of the, the inspiration for this show? Well, Patrick very kindly uh, said, why don't I come and live with you? You're by yourself and um, it'll be good to, for us to be together and I can make sure that everything's okay at the house. So I was deeply grateful uh, for that and deeply grateful to be rooming with him. And it's been really a lot of fun. I know a lot of people said to me that they're struggling with their adult kids or kids who came home from college and that's been kind of a little bit bumpy. I know a lot of parents are struggling having small children at home and I totally understand that. But for us, it's been really a wonderful, or at least I should say, I'm speaking for myself. It's been a really <laughs> wonderful experience, I gotta say. So it's been, um, I'll be able to look back on this with great um, joy. It's been uh, a blast to kind of be back here living with her. And we were just thinking, you know, what can we do together that will, you know, bring some sort of optimism and positivity to uh, the followers that we have? Like, how can we use our platform to, to inspire other people? And that's when we kind of just came up with the idea of doing home together, because that's essentially what we're doing. We're being home together. And we really wanted to use our platforms to highlight um, other people that were using this time to, uh, to help people, to use their platforms, to go out to raise money, to raise awareness, to, um, you know, use their own little, um, you know, niches towards, towards their audience, whether that was Guy Fury helping out uh, employees of restaurants or Bethany Frankel, you know, using her uh, business and entrepreneurial background to go and find uh, masks at certain pricing and not price gouge. Um, or if that was Mel Robbins giving, you know, tips to people to have um, routines in their day. Um, so, and, you know, it, it's really tough out there and we understand that, but we wanted to bring some sort of uh, positivity and, and light at the end of the tunnel. All of these people are trying to step into a space and help others. And that's what we wanted to use our platforms for, was to bring hope, to bring inspiration, but to also let people know that there are organizations out there to help them. Right. You know, it's, it's interesting. We had uh, Dr. Oz on the show um, last week, and he said the way that you can find happiness in this moment is to find purpose. And I know, Maria, mm -hmm. you, you're, you write now once a day about helping people find purpose in what's happening right now. Yeah, well, I think all of the people that we've had on Home Together have found purpose. They're all stepping up and stepping out. And I was raised uh, uh, by two people who expected me to be of service. And uh, so at the Sunday paper, which is our weekly newsletter, we launched a once a day challenge so that people would think about, okay, how can I be of service? And whether it's calling somebody, texting somebody. Today, Patrick brought in egg bites made by him <laughs> to me. That's an act of service is an act of love and those things aren't small i think sometimes people think oh my god these things are overwhelming 10 million people filed for unemployment how can i possibly help you can help by calling somebody you can help by uh, dropping something at somebody's house you can help by bringing someone in your home something you made there are so many different ways writing a handwritten note um, i think it's 
kind of all of us when this is over want to be able to look back and tell our children and our grandchildren this is what i learned in this moment if you feel helpless the best way to turn that feeling into something positive is to go out and be helpful uh how are the egg bites they were good. They were good. One of the, uh, we, we both are Starbucks fanatics and we go there for the coffee and egg bites in the morning. And since we can't do that, I've been making her some egg bites here at home. Uh, yes, they get better each day. They very get nice. Each day. I love that. And, yeah. and Patrick, you, you tweeted out something similar, which I retweeted because I thought it was so moving, which is this concept of so many people are home by themselves. They're not home together right now. Yeah. And taking mm -hmm. a moment in your day every day to reach out to people that you may not have even talked to that much recently and and say hello right so i i kind of came up with that it just came across you know i'm going to right now reach out to all the small business owners that i knew and reach out saying hey i'm thinking of you hey is there anything i can do for you can i order food in from you can i you know put it on my social media can i anything and it meant so much to these people and i think that when this is all said and done people will really remember who did those kinds of acts of kindness who who did check on them who was thinking of them Totally. We're going to have to take a pause right there when we come back more with Maria Shriver and Patrick Schwarzenegger. And as we go to break some music this week, Jimmy Fallon invited Adam Sandler on The Tonight Show for a new song about this moment. Take a look. Hey, guys. Hey. We're back right, now nice. with Maria Shriver and Patrick Schwarzenegger. The mother-son duo have their own Instagram live show called Home Together, where they talk to people making a difference. And Maria, I know you are so involved in the Alzheimer's community. Um, mm -hmm. In memory of your father, um, my grandmother um, passed away from Alzheimer's, and I do a lot of work in that community as well. And I know that community is especially hard hit um, with a lot of older people who can't be visited right now. Um, That's true. What, I mean, what's not what's only your people, advice to people in that in that space? Well, there's not only people who have Alzheimer's who are hard hit, whether they might be in a nursing home, a memory care facility, um, also their kids who are oftentimes their primary caregiver. There's a lot of home health workers. We haven't heard that much about them. We're focused, I think, and rightly so, on all the first responders and those in the hospitals. But there are millions of other people who are home health care workers who come to work every single day caring for somebody who might have Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia, Parkinson's, who might have a special needs child. These people uh, do really kind of Herculean work day in, day out. And so we're working uh, very much so the women's Alzheimer's movement to service this population, to service the children of this population who are very stressed. A couple quick fun questions uh, to wrap things up too. Patrick, um, I'm jealous as a broadcast journalist because you get to now co-host with one of the great journalists of her generation. <laughs> yes. What have you learned about being a host from your mom? Um, I would say I've, I've learned a little bit about preparation. Um, a little. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to just doing Instagram lives or talking with other people, just kind of going on the spot. And Maria, the counter to that, what have you learned from Patrick? Well, I've learned uh, that Patrick's really good at this. Uh, many people have said to me, wow, you know, in the beginning you were doing that, Patrick seemed like maybe a little bit uneasy. Now you can barely get a word in. He's the next Anderson Cooper. He's from a different generation. And some of these people he doesn't, he's coming to them fresh, whereas I may have kind of interviewed them before and he has a completely different perspective so it also tells me the importance of working across generations mm -hmm. across decades and how we can both learn uh, from the other and one last <laughs> question so so we see you guys on these Instagram lives maybe that's one hour of the day but what's the other 23 hours of the day look like are, are we binging something are we reading something what what's the day in a life look like right now We've been uh, a little bit of a mix. I just had shoulder surgery, unfortunately. So I've, I've been rehabbing every uh, morning or trying to, and she works out as well. Um, you know, I think we're both big believers in having a morning routine, even if you're not at your normal, um, you know, work day and, and, and whatnot, because it creates kind of an idea of certainty and predictability in your day. Um, the other thing we've been doing is uh, binge watching. We started, we did, we've blown through Breaking Bad and uh, now we're, we're doing and Ozark. And Joe Exotic. And Joe Exotic was That's right. bonkers. Have you and, not uh, seen Breaking Bad? 
I, I had never seen it. Oh I've seen so many neither. shows. And I had neither. Everyone recommended it. And I was like, you know what? I have so much time at night. I'm going to do the six seasons. I'm confused because I have a crush now on Joe Exotic, Brian Cranston, and Aaron Paul. <laughs> oh, my so, God. Uh, <laughs> well, when you're done with so this, you need, ther- you need therapy, Maria, because that <laughs> yeah. says something about you. That's true. Thank- but I'll tell you what we've been doing. I continue to work on the women's Alzheimer's movement, which you said every day we're meeting, we're pivoting. Yeah. We're, so we're trying to be out there and use this time effectively and proactively and to be of service. Well, you've been an inspiration um, for so many people for so long, Maria. And, and I think a testament to you is how incredible your kids are. Um, and uh, yes. all four Thank of your you. kids are, are extraordinary successes, yeah. and it's great to get to know Patrick. I got to know Patrick at California Strong, uh, this That's celebrity yeah. baseball yeah. game where he was the star of the entire day. Uh, we, we had the same, we both got like a single and we're lucky to get on base and then ran as hard as we possibly could. So uh, it was nice to I see you I think we got there. doubles. Don't du- sell ourselves short. We got doubles. Yeah, doubles. doubles. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Um, keep up the good work. Thank you for the inspiration. We hope all of our viewers will watch your guys on Instagram and, uh, and we'll you. see um, Patrick in this seat soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so thank much. Pat- Patrick thank Schwarzenegger, Maria Shriver, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our thanks to Maria Shriver and to Patrick Schwarzenegger. Um, You know we love to play music on this show. And one thing that was really special this week was John Krasinski from The Office. He's got a new good news show online. It's kind of similar to some of what they're talking about. He brought this nine-year-old girl. She couldn't see Hamilton because of all of this. Well, he got Lin-Manuel Miranda and the cast of Hamilton to surprise her on a Zoom call and perform for her. So here is the original cast of Hamilton. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Welcome back to The Issue Is. All week long, we've been reaching out to some of our high-profile friends asking for their messages of thanks to California's first responders. We end with them. Thank you. We appreciate you. And may God bless you. Uh, We're here to say thank you profoundly to all the first responders. Those guys are putting their lives on the line. And the women. All the people that keep us healthy. I don't know how we can ever repay this debt to you and it is a debt we really appreciate you thank you and stay safe we know that you've got us and we want you to know that we've got you